video we're going to explore the Varu Varu maze of Tiwanaku and its possible symbolic meaning. When we zoom into Tiwanaku, you will see the Varu Varu labyrinth 273 meters north of the Kalasasaya. For those of you who have not seen the video about the Varu Varu, I will now give a short explanation of what Varu Varu means. It is said that the so-called Camelones or Varu Varu was a powerful technology implanted since ancient times in the highlands of the Andes. Its primary purpose was to create a better cultivation environment in the cold temperatures of the highland nights. The water surrounding the ridges where the yields were allows the crops not to freeze every night when temperatures might drop down to an average of 15 degrees. During the day the temperature rises due to the high plateau sun and the water heated from sunrise to sunset emits enough heat at night, so nothing freezes in the meantime. I don't know if this design in Tiwanaku was used for cultivation of crops, but the design with ridges and supposed water channels are clearly similar to other Varu Varu constructions in Puno, Peru. However, none of them has the same design as this one in Tiwanaku. If you take a close look at this structure, you will notice it has four or five openings, in order to cross to the other side, you have to follow a certain path or else you will get stuck in the maze. If you mark out the paths you can follow to the other side, you can see they make out an inward chakana, also known as the Andean cross. I will get back to this, but first I would like to talk about the symbol of the maze in the Andean world. The Quechua name for the maze can be translated to chinkana. The word chinkana also has several other meanings. It can mean secret, or it can mean cavern or cave, or it can mean a game of hide and seek. If you split the word in two, you get the Quechua words chin and kana. Chin can mean silence or silent. Kana can mean is or there is. It can also mean white or gray hairs, which can be a symbol of wisdom. So if you put the meanings together, you get the meaning there is silence or silent wisdom. I deliberately used the word maze and not labyrinth when describing this complex. Mazes and labyrinths look a little similar at first glance, but once you're stuck inside one, it feels quite different. Here's the difference. Mazes have many different paths branching off into dead ends, making their symbolism similar to that of a crossroad. If you're ever stuck inside a maze, you will have to make decisions about which path to take. The path you have to take in order to come to the center and cross to the other side of this particular maze makes the shape of an inverted Andean cross, also known as Chakana. The Quechua term Chakana is composed of two parts. Chaka means bridge and Na is an accusative ending. In the Andean view of the world, Chakana refers to the Southern Cross present in space which is represented by Tavachaskas or four stars and it is the symbol of the communication of the Andean peoples with other spaces. With reference to this territorial space it marks the four cardinal points north, south, east and west. This is closely connected to Andean cosmography. In geometric terms we may say that the Andean Jacana is a cross with three angles on each of its sides both above and below, making a total of 12. It is also related to time, in which the 12 angles symbolize the 12 months of the Andean calendar and the four extremities represents the four seasons of the Andean world. The Chakana is also said to symbolize the three levels of existence. The three levels are Hanapacha, the upper world inhabited by the superior gods, Kaipacha, the world of our everyday existence, and Uku or Urun Pacha, the underworld inhabited by spirits of the dead, the ancestors, their overlords and various deities having close contact to the earth plane. One observation I would like to share is that this maze design in Tiwanaku can be divided into four parts. One part we can call the south part, the second the north part, the third the west part and the fourth the east part. If the north part and south part switches places you get a normal Andean cross. And you get the same if the west part switches places with the east part. Even the Tiwanaku Museum is designed as a Jacana when viewed from above. In a paper titled El Pensamiento Filosofico Andino, 
Organario and Rodolfo Kusch, the author named Jaime Vargas Condore writes about the symbolic meaning of Varu Varu and the Andean cross, also known as Chancana. Quote, Concepts such as the world, Pacha, and the point of origin, Ushnu or Varu, give us elements to understand the original worldview. The chronicler Yamkui distinguishes the creation of the world in different times and heterogeneous spaces, but Andean mythology recognizes Tiwanaku as the center. The Ushnu or Waru, point of origin, as the central axis, concentrates the deep with the high or lofty in the duality of Pacha. Around the central point, the original world is planned, and the symbol of the balance of the world represents the Andean cross. End quote. The first thing I would like to point out in this quote is that the author relates the word Waru with the concept, the point of origin. The second point is that the author points out that Andean mythology recognizes Tiwanaku as the central axis. In mathematics, there are two kinds of axes, the horizontal and the vertical, or x-axis and y-axis. The point where these two axes meet is called the origin in mathematics and has the value zero. I would like to mention that the Aymara name for Tiwanaku is Taipikala. Taipi means center and Kala means rock or building material of stone. So the name Taipikala can be translated to mean stone building in the center. So if Tiwanaku lies at the crossing point of a horizontal line and a vertical line, what types of lines could they be? If you are using Google Earth, I would like you to zoom out so you can see all of South America. The southernmost point of South America is a tiny islet known as Aguila Islet. This islet is part of the Diego Ramirez Islands. If you were to draw a straight line directly south from Tiwanaku, it will almost hit directly on South America's southernmost point. On this line between Tiwanaku and Aguila Islet, you find the concentric circles in Patagonia, which I talked about in a previous video. The distance from these concentric circles to Tiwanaku is 3141 kilometers. These are the same digits you find in Pi, which is 3.141 etc. You can of course say that all of this is just coincidence, but if you are like me, you keep your mind open to the idea that this is not just all coincidence. Another indication that the north-south direction was important to the Andean people is Konkuvankane. This ancient place is located 28 kilometers exactly south of the Kalasasaya in Tiwanaku. They are both located at the longitude 68.6725 degrees west. If the line coming straight north from the southernmost point of South America, Aguila Islet, is considered the y-axis, then what is the line or x-axis that crosses the y-axis in Tiwanaku? 3,512 kilometers west of Chile lies Rapa Nui, also known as Easter Island, in the southeastern Pacific Ocean. Rapa Nui is famous for its stone statues of human figures known as Muay. It is not the Muay I'm going to talk about in this video, it is the geographic location of where it is located. Rapa Nui is one of the most remote places on earth, when measured in distance to closest land. It is also the westernmost point of South America. You could argue that Rapa Nui is instead the most easternmost point of Oceania. Rapa Nui was annexed by Chile in 1888, so one could say that its connection to South America as the westernmost point is a new and man-made construct. However, I'm going to make the argument of why it naturally can be counted as part of South America. Rapa Nui lies on the tectonic plate known as the Nazca Plate, named after the Nazca region in southern Peru. The Nazca Plate is one of several tectonic plates that make up the continent of South America. So from a geological point of view, it is more logical to associate Rapa Nui as part of South America than Oceania. It is said that Tepito Utehenua was the name of the island before it was called Rapa Nui and then later Easter Island. The name Tepito Utehenua can be translated to mean the end of the world 
or the end of the land, or the end of the terrain. The word te is translated to mean the in English. The words pitu and henua can have several meanings. Pitu can mean end or extremity, or it can mean navel or umbilical cord, or it can mean pole, as in north and south pole. If the name te pitu te henua originally meant either the end of the world, the end of the land, or extremity of the world, they would all be fitting names for an island that marks the extreme west of a continent and is also one of the most remote places on earth when measuring the distance to nearest land. One could of course argue that this is just coincidence, that the early inhabitants of Rapa Nui could not possibly have had that geographical knowledge. But if you are like me, you at least keep that possibility open. To be precise, the westernmost point of South America is an islet named Mutunui. Mutunui is the largest of three islets just south of East Rhyon. The name Mutunui can be translated to important island in the Maori language. In a cave near the edge of the islet, there was one time a statue named Titahanga Utehenua. This name is translated to mean boundary of the land or boundary of the earth. This statue is now at the Pitt Rivers Museum in Oxford. This video is about South America, but as an interesting side note, I could tell you that if you measure the distance from Mutunui to the Sphinx in Giza, you get the distance 16,180 kilometers. These are the same digits you find in Phi, also known as the Golden Ratio. Is this just a coincidence or could there be a connection? Now we move back to South America, to João Pessoa, a port city in northeastern Brazil. Here, at the point named Ponta dos Seixas, exists the easternmost point of the American continent. If you draw a straight line on a map from Ponta dos Seixas to Motunui on East Island, the line will pass straight north of Tehuanaco. So this line that goes from the westernmost point of South America to the easternmost mainland point of South America will cross the line coming straight north from the southernmost point of South America. And the place where they cross is just next to Tiwanaku. Is that just a coincidence? One could ask the question, what would be the purpose to construct something in the crossing point of these two lines? I don't know the answer to that, but if Tiwanaku was built deliberately to mark out this crossing point, my best guess is that it was built as a survey marker or reference point for surveying. Survey markers, also called survey marks, survey monuments or geodetic marks, are objects placed to mark key survey points on the Earth's surface. 